Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man. Check it out. Here it is. All in one video. All in one video. The stainless steel. How to put on the, st the stainless steel on the side. How to put the fuzzies in, window fuzzies in, window run channel, all the belt molding, everything. It's all in this. How to install a, the rear quarter glass, how to install the door glass, how to install a vent glass. It's all in this episode. It's a lot. It's an awful, awful lot. So, uh, you, you know, we spent two days getting this done. If you're interested in seeing how we got this done this weekend on Christine, stay tuned. All right, happy weekend. Bill here with Restoring Christine. Christine, I'm 56 Bel Air. She's behind me. We're going to be working today on windows, window fuzzies, and stainless steel trim run channel on the glass. We're going to install everything on the passenger side. I spent some time uh, figuring out my learning curve, putting everything back on the driver's side. You can see it's fully assembled behind me. So now I've got all that out of the way, <laughs> and you're going to benefit from all my mistakes that I had to do and redo and undo and fix and we got it straight. <laughs> so now I'll be able to hopefully go straight to the solution on the passenger side and show you every little tip and trick that I've had to use in order to get this driver's side done. So let's first take a look at that. So Christine being a 56 Bel Air model, uh, she's got the stainless with the color stripe, the color divide. So it's two, two levels of stainless. There's an upper level of stainless that comes and I don't have my fenders on yet of course, but this comes to a teardrop in the front and then it continues on the bottom and it goes all the way to the rear bumper. So that splits, that divides the color. So I'm gonna show you how all of that attaches. Then, uh, installing the glasses on the door, we're gonna install a window regulator, install the vent glass. The vent glass, uh, I've rebuilt these in another episode, so um, I'll put a link to that up, up above. But I rebuilt those vent glass windows, and then um, I put new rollers on all of my glass i put new tracks on my glass all my glass is set it's ready to go and we got all the stainless set on this side the stainless on the top of the door i've got some tricks on that too all the way throughout so so the other thing are the window fuzzies so you can see there's some run channel that goes on the inside of the vent glass there's some run channel that goes all the way around the door we'll show you how to put that in you open the door and show you on the back. So on the back, on the back, the glass, you know, this will roll down. I'll show you how all that goes together. And that's also got fuzzies on the inside of the stainless run channel around the top of that. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do that on the passenger side. So let's get into it. So I've been working on this bench. And I've got all my stainless, these are all stainless steel pieces that go on the passenger side. Uh, these, I've already polished these. I'll put a link to that if you're interested in seeing how I got that all done. And I've got miscellaneous fasteners all just strewn about in different clips and whatnot. I bought, I bought new clip sets for this because uh, the clips that were on the car were not, were not in great shape. Uh, I figured by the time I tried to find them all, it was going to be trouble, but... I noticed that these all, every just about everything I got is old 55 brand. And these all came from, um, I don't know if I got, I think I got some of these from h and I got some of these from Mutton Hollow. Uh, I collect them in different pieces, parts, depending on who had what and available when. Um, but like, that's all from old, old 55. So you might, you might recognize this. You know, this is the kind of clip that might come out of the back and that's what yours looks like when it's supposed to look like this. You know, it's got a little spring tab on it. So there's various sizes like this. Then on the doors, there's this kind of a like, I don't know what you describe, this little wire clip that uh, that goes in. But then when I bought the replacement clip set, the replacement clip set said, eh, throw these in the trash, use this. So they gave me these, which they work, they work better. So I like that. There's also, uh, you, you'll find at the end of some of your moldings, there'll be a little, a little piece like this. 
And uh, with the new sets, that's threaded actually. And so with the new sets, you get the, the new little piece. I'll show you where those go. And what else? Oh, they've got um, on the belt line molding at the top. There's these clips that look like this. And these, these are rare. Uh, they're expensive. It's like $35 a set. And I picked up something at AutoZone that looks pretty similar. And I'm going to modify that to make that work for the couple of three clips that I have that are missing. So, let's just start getting into it and we'll start putting one piece on at a time and it'll all sort itself out. Alright, let's start with the long stainless that goes on the bottom. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven holes. Eleven clips that go on this. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to, want to take my piece of stainless and make sure once I put these clips on, I'm going to make sure that it uh, that it trails and it follows the follows the shape of the fender line just right. So what I need to do is I need to pick out 11 clips out of this bundle, out of this batch, and put them on here and get them just slid in place. And I'm going to show you a trick on that too. So these clips, you'd think you looking at them it's like okay well I can recognize how that goes it just goes just like this and you just pop it in and ta-da and it's in but one of the lessons I learned the hard way is that when you're putting on the nut and you get to, to tighten, tightening this up and you're spinning it this way guess what happens when it's on the other side of the car and you get to tighten it it turns that and doop, the molding pops off so what I've discovered is that every one of these clips needs to go the other way and the only way to make it go the other way is to pry this out so you have to have it in like that. So this little tail is holding it tight. Now when you, when you tighten this and you're cranking on it, it's jamming it into the corners. It's actually helping wedge that in the correct place instead of sliding it out. You're gonna have about three, three of these large ones. And I kept all my old clips. So uh, the instructions honestly tell you to, um, that don't worry about which one is which that you just put the bigger ones when you think you need the bigger ones and then when they, you can step down in size, step down in size. So I want to say that there's three different size clips on this on this uh, side and it, it's so flexible. It's just, it's not that, that big of a deal. All right, I got them all in and I just have them just set, in, set kind of where the rust marks were from the previous clip. So I used two old clips because I like these bigger clips. They're a little more uh, rugged. So we've got them all the way in, all the way down, and the one over here I had to kind of flip it around so to make sure that it goes, it gets close. It's like within an inch and a quarter of the door. So I use the two adjustable um, tabs on, on these last two. They have these, the little stud slides. So now let me take this and bring this over to the car and it just bolts right up. So I've got them all slid in. I don't have anything tight yet. I just used my finger to adjust them as I went down the line. But the thing is, I need to make sure that this is just where it needs to be. So this, uh, the, the body shop manual says, you know, it's about, I think want to say it like a 16th right here. So that's, that's a good gap right here, just to get it really close to where it's not sticking out. And then, then you make sure that the rest of them in. You'll notice though that my glass is not in. So without the glass, you can get to this a lot easier. So you have three in the cavity, one, two, three in the, in the door, in the, quarter cavity then you got one two three four here that are in the wheel well and then I, I'll need to figure out whether that these are ahead of or behind the bulkhead but none of them are in a trunk some of them you get to from the back and then sometimes some of them you get to from inside the wheel well so there's only three within the cavity and then the rest are are either in a wheel well or in a rear rear uh, trunk area so looking at the door molding the door molding has two pieces that go in the ends, these little clips here, and they dome, they dome outward, so they cup out, out towards the, uh, the door skin, and then the original clips look like this. So when they sell you the replacement clips, they sell you uh, a pack that has these in it, and they don't give you enough of them. They give you, they say, oh, you only need to use four if you're going to use this type of a clip. Well. So what that means is you're going to use as many of these as you can, and then uh, you'll you'll use these in the other holes. I, I don't. I just don't think you should have a hole and not have a clip in it. You know, then that's what they tell you to do. So uh, we're going to do that. So let me go ahead and get these two set up. So I have them all in, and on the end it's an 832 screw. 
I used the little square clip, the wire clip to go in one of the square holes. Same thing on the other side, wire clip to go in one of the square holes. Because some of these are square and some of these are, are round. So I didn't, I, um, I didn't tighten the back molding until I know I've got this one pretty close to where it needs to go because I need vertical alignment to make sure that, it's, that, that they align and uh, make sure that they break right in the stripe. So I'm just finagling this until they can get close to start going in. And I need to, you can shove that forward and backwards before you tighten it. What's nice is using the little clips is that'll, uh, that'll tack it in place while you get your screws in. So now I need to, what I want to do is I want this back side to look good. So I've got to make sure that this back side is back close enough to where when I shut the door it looks good. So I'm going to play that, that. And then on the inside it's an 832 screw. And since on mine, on Christine, the holes here are a little bit big, I'm going with a stainless washer. So I put a stainless steel washer on the back side and that's going to screw into that little clip. And you might need to take a little pick and align that before you put the screw in. All right, this is what I was talking about when I sit it in one tight in this molding before I get this one on. I have this one, and when I first put it on, it was way too high, and so I had to drop it down and I tighten that screw. So now what I need to do is I need to adjust this. I need to shove that up and down as I tighten that and then get that aligned. There you go, now it's flush. So this entire door now, this is all set up. So the door is aligning, the molding is aligning, and that's what's going to look really good. All right, the piece on the hip takes the same sort of clips, and so I'm kind of piecemealing these together. I used, I must have used some of the bigger clips where these were supposed to be, so. Uh, but I've got enough clips between uh, the old ones and the new ones, so I'm going to go ahead and put this up, and it's one, two, three, four clips. Let me go ahead and get that in, and then we'll line up the door. All right, that's all the side stainless, top and bottom on the door, on the hip, and then the long sweeping piece that goes down the rear quarter panel. It's all lined up really nicely. And again, it's got two 832 screws, six fasteners, two 832 screws here, one and one. And then this has one, two, three, four, four clips, and they're all in that, in that uh, quarter window well. The next piece we're gonna put on, uh, this needs to go on before the run channel. This is the back corner. So there's one, two, three, number eight screws that, that screw in from the back. And then there's one clip on the top and one clip on the bottom. Now the bottom one requires a hole in the body that I just don't want to put. So I'm not going to put this clip back. I don't have it on the other side. Uh, they were rusted when I took them off and um, I'm just going to go without it. So these tabs have a little neck where, the, where they're, they're tapered down, you can bend them out of the way and you need to bend them out of the way. All right, so the clip that goes here looks like this. So that clip slips in underneath here. All right, you can see what kind of profile it gives you. It gives you this little pyramid looking thing. So I went to AutoZone because these things are expensive. They're like 30 or $40 for uh, an entire set. You can't get one or two, you gotta get the whole set. So this is NEDA, N-E-E-D-A, 481-020. And it looks sort of like this, but I had to modify it. So this, this has been clipped off the edge. I removed a flange, and it looks like a facsimile. So it's pretty close. We're going to use this for, I think I, I think I need two or three of these. So I'm going to use these in the middle and on this end because the other clip I'm gonna use a factory clip there on the end to hold to hold this secure hold that down because the other one goes over it so um but this one's gonna have three screws on the back side holding it so let's go ahead and put it in there is no getting getting around bending those tabs because you gotta you gotta really snake this thing in with this part so it goes over you have to like fish it, fish it through. And once you get it close, it ought to start cooperating. There we go. There's that neat apart. Look at that. It's holding it tight. So that works. That works. All right. One, two, three. 
and to make sure that the holes were there I had to recreate two holes um, what you're looking at is a, a mess <laughs> that was made because when I rebuilt this corner um, I missed the shape of this back it kind of warped inward and my glass didn't fit and that was a nightmare I had to do new more body work on the roof that one's in all right the front molding the front molding has a scallop that goes around the door jam around the B pillar and then on the back side there's one two three four five six of those little TP parts the clips and you can see there's a factory original and there's my fake so it's gonna work it's not uh, super tight but um, it's better than nothing so we're gonna try this and on the back side it's got one two three four number eight screws goes in the back so as long as I can get this thing wrapped on there and get it tight it ought to be fine so I'm not so worried about these clips here so that's this, you can see why you need to bend it um, there's no way to get these in without having that bent out of the way you just can't you can't have you know that insert so that's how it's got to go so let's see if we can't get so you've got to get the top in first and then you wrap this around it's really a pain in the foot but a little patience it should go you really got to get these tabs bent way out of the way because they get in the way I guess that's why they don't build cars like they used to get that started and once you get it going you're on your way That's it. That's it. It's wrapped all the way around. It's tight over here. Look at that. It's tight. It's all in. It's snug. That looks good. Four screws, number eights, and then that'll be in. All right. While I'm waiting for that uh, weather stripping adhesive to dry on the run channel for the back, why don't we go ahead and put this this uh, chrome piece on this piece of stainless on the top of the door? So this one is fastened by, there's a screw at both ends, and then there's small little tiny short screws here. And let me show you a nightmare. This happened. <laughs> I was putting on this stainless on the top of the door, and I wasn't really paying attention. I had what I thought was the right hardware. I ordered, I ordered the belt, uh, belt line hardware, and here was this. You see this? Door belt molding screws. 55 to 7 sport coupe nomad and convertible and in that are these little tiny little sheet metal screws so I cracked open this pack and I started to screw from the back side in the little holes into the little pieces of hardware that are back here and I didn't pay attention to what was going on but I started punching holes I punched one let me see if I can find it one two three holes right there there you go I ended up going the northern tool and buying a spool of stainless steel wire and there's one video on YouTube that this guy will show you how to fix that and my heart was in my chat my throat because you can't buy that new anymore and you can only find it used and if you can find it used if you can it's crazy expensive so it's a good thing I was able to salvage that, but I'm going to show you on this one. I, uh, I've discovered that my passenger side, which I didn't do, somebody else did, I had to patch that. So you can see the weld marks, and that's what it looks like after it's it's uh, sanded, but not before it's buffed. So I'm going to buff that out in a moment. But anyway, so, so what about these little screws? See these little bitty tiny little screws that, um, that go in there. There's another kit, upper door molding clip set, 55 to 57 Bel Air two door sedan. I mean, you know, upper window molding clip, door belt molding screws. Very easy mistake to make. These screws, if you tried to put these screws into this hardware and you put it in the door, you'd say, yeah, that's supposed to go, but nope. It's supposed to be these so let's crack this open and I'll show you what that looks like 
So this pack, it comes with the little backing plates that are threaded. I can open it. So that's what it's supposed to be. A number 832 by quarter inch. A beveled head. And it goes into this piece of hardware that slips into the into the stainless steel. So the top of the door has a hole in this. Then on the ends, the very ends is a bigger screw that get or a different screw that goes into the ends of these these pieces. So you'll notice that this screw set didn't come with these pieces. <laughs> so it's a good thing they're still on there. I guess those are uber rare. All right, so let me go ahead and polish this up. I'm going to bring this over to my buffing wheel. Where'd it go? I'm going to bring this over to my buffing wheel and uh, mark me so you can see where this is and where this is, and I'll get that out. All right, so there's a weld. There's a weld. Doop. Looks good to me. We'll put the clips on and we'll go mount it. So this is straightforward. It just goes on. It just it snaps on real easy. And then you just need to make sure that these two end pieces are in the right spot in order for this to to, um, to be able to find these screws. Yep, you gotta go under it. There you go. Snap it in. There it is. Snap it in. And then uh, the screws come in from the back side. All right, it's these little teeny tiny quarter inch long screws that go in the in here. And they're a little hard to get started. You know, have to have a pointed object like this, a pick. You know, if you can have a pick, then you'll be able to get them to where they'll get close to lining up, and then you'll be able to get them in. So that's the trick to getting them. All right, got them in. There's an 832 pan head, and then flat heads or bugle heads all the way through. One, two, three, four, five of those, and another pan head over here. All of them 832 quarter inch, and this is maybe uh, all right. In addition to the top screws, is that one screw on that on that tab I kept having to bend out of the way, and another screw here that's a number eight by super short sheet metal screw. So these are machine screws, and these two are sheet metal screws. Well, the door didn't quite shut, but there you go. All right, all right the next thing we're going to do is going to be the run channel. That's this. It goes all the way around the perimeter. It goes down into the into the well. It comes around the front here. So this is for the rear quarter. I'm gonna do this run channel on this side. So let's show you what that's all about. So on my bench, I have the run channel. And one of these is for the door and one of these is for that rear quarter. They both came with the kink in the corner. And uh, unfortunately, they overkinked it, and when they did, they caused that to happen. And I'm going to show you what's going on with this stuff. So this run channel is made out of steel. It's metal. Here's the metal, and it's and it's little uh, little segments that go around. And this piece is pulled off, so you can see the two corners. It's got a crimped piece of stainless that goes over the edge. So this, when you bend it, you'll notice that the run channel, it's already bent and kinked. You see this extra length? It's not, it's not, that got there because they did this, because they bent this corner and that ran this run channel in this direction. It ran the outside edge. Because when you bend it, it's like a deck of cards. So when you bend this, this is like an accordion. In fact, you can, I wish if you could feel it, but it's in little segments on the inside. Uh, I'll see if I can tear one of these apart to show you that. But when you bend this, this is a, a, a fixed length. So as you bend this around, this is going to slide over the over the channel. So you can bend this and you can shape this in all kinds of different ways. And I had to, on my driver's side, I had to repair this on the other run channel because it did exactly this. They overbent it. Uh, they didn't they didn't allow the the channel it's the the, um, the stainless part to to slide with it and keep up and they ended up ripping this out of the out of the uh the stainless let me go ahead and uh 
and I'll peel this and you can see what this is like. So this is what the run channel, how it's made. There you go. See? So when you bend it, the outside edge, the outside edge is solid and the side walls are um, sawtooth like this. So when you bend it, when you bend it, it'll take a curve like this. So it'll allow this channel to curve. But that means that this fixed length, this has got to, st it stays the same. So these slide within. And what's happened on this corner is they got a little too happy with it. And they pulled, they pulled the little, the little side pieces out of the main piece. So what I've got to do is I've got to now try to get, with this cloth still on this, I've got to be able to get that piece of stainless, the little sidewall piece, I've got to be able to get this slipped back over it and crimped. And it's, it's a job. So I'm going to do that. And then when, we, when I finish it, then we're going to go put this in the car. All right, I got it. Took a little work, but I got it to where it's now it's closed. So it's closed on both sides. It's completely pinched. And you can see my tools of the trade, flathead screwdriver, um, a little needle nose pliers, and then to pinch it, I'm using a pair of um, snips or dikes. All right, so now to put this in, to put this in, this is what you're gonna use. You're gonna use 3M black weather strip adhesive. That's all you need. You might need to put a screw or a rivet somewhere around the lower edges but certainly not around the perimeter so this you use this by applying it on both the part you're putting on and the backing material you use it like contact cement you let them tack up and then once they tack up then you put them back in so what's going to happen is we're going to get this in position and then we're going to have to get the glass in and then once we get the glass in we'll be able to hold this up and then once that that holds I mean, once that locks down, it's going to lock down for good because it's going to um, it's going to do like this one did. So, you know, that's our goal for over there. So let's go ahead and do that. I find it best to have a sacrificial brush. It's not going to last, you know. So I'm using just one of these um, China bristle brus brushes. You know, you can get these at Harbor Freight. They're pretty inexpensive, and we're going to lather this up, so I'm going to go all up in this, in this groove up in here. And I want a thin, I want a thin coat. So, I'm just going to put this up tight in the corner. That's why I'm using the brush. And do the same thing to the back of the, the run channel. And do the side here. Make sure that the side's coated. So I'm just painting it with this weather stripping adhesive. So once I get this whole thing done, we'll do the part. And then we'll come bend them in place and stick them. And the length at least this length is not that sensitive. Once you've tacked it with the, the uh, weather stripping cement, it's as easy as just slipping it in and then curving it where it needs to go. Got to get it in the track. In the track there, in the track here. And shove it down. This is already a little bit pretty bent, but this just goes into that little groove and uh, what I have is I have some clamps to kind of help it along so the glass when we put the glass in the glass is going to shove that and then have that uh, all the way together it's going to hold it hold its shape but for right now I mean you can see it just bends right in place and look I'm tacking it the weather strip in the is holding it it's all the way up. It's in. And what I'm going to do is just to help it out, I'm going to put a clamp. I'm going to clamp here just to hold it up in case, you know, overnight it wants to fall. And then same thing over here in this on this B pillar. But um, so I'm just going to do that. 
clamp it in place and uh, walk away from it. So that's going to be it for this evening. <laughs> I'll be back at it tomorrow morning and then we're going to go ahead and put in this rear quarter glass, put in a vent glass and a front door glass and that's going to be it. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. that <laughs> what a sight what a sight you know sometimes <laughs> when I get up first thing in the morning um, I'm an early riser <laughs> I let the dogs out and when I let the dogs out you know they t it takes them a few minutes so the first thing I do is like they go do their business and I come in here and I take a peek <laughs> So that's usually what I do when I first wake up is I'll come in here and just like look and then and just keep the faith. <laughs> but anyway, all right, let's see. Let's see how our run channel came out because that's where we left off last night. Um, I put the put a couple of of uh, clamps on it to just hold it in case it wanted to drop. And it doesn't really matter. You know, it's like some of this stuff you know, is dropping a little bit. But when I went once you put the glass in and the glass shoves it up, it ought to be OK. But this, you know, this is all tight, and that's that curve. That's where I had to repair that on the bench. Let's pull it off. Pull that off. Pull this one off. Yep. It's looking good. All right, so what are we going to do this morning? We're getting close. I mean, we're to the point now where we're about ready to put the glass in. But, 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 but. The piece of trim that comes here holds the window fuzzy. So the window fuzzy, uh, the way it attaches, I have to tune it or cut it to where it aligns with or dovetails into this into the run channel here and here, um, and and it adheres to the to the back side of that that piece of chrome or stainless, and you can't get to it when the glass is in. You know, the glass is over there, you can kind of see it. Uh, you can see the see the the fuzzies on the on the piece of stainless and you can't get to it once the window is installed because the window is kind of partially blocking it. So I need to go put that on the molding and then put the molding on and then we can put the glass in. So let's do that. So here's the piece of stainless that goes on that side. And on the back side is a flange, so it's got an edge. And you'll notice this one has a whole bunch of holes in it. A ton of holes, some of which are factory, some are not. So the window fuzzy right here, this set came from Repops. And um, it's pretty bent. And I appreciate having this, this strong curve in it, that's, that's helpful. Uh, you know, I haven't cut one of these apart to see how it's made, but I'm pretty sure it's made the sim made similarly to the way the run channel is, where it's got probably little little segmented ends, because otherwise I don't know how you'd bend that flat. But it comes pre-bent, and uh, it also comes pre-punched. The original way that this window fuzzy attached was through staples. So you'll see there's some staple holes. There's one, two here, maybe one, two here, one, two there little tiny in fact there's a remnant staple you can see the, the the piece still in there I gotta get that out there's another staple here the staples so they, these are the staples that would have been from the factory and if you want to do a factory um, factory correct or you know reproduction installation then this is what you would do and on the side of the body there's cavities, there's little slots where these staples go so that when you put this on, the staples don't interfere with, the, or the body doesn't interfere with the staple position. But that's the old school way. And then um, I want to show you something. A while back, a long while back, I rebuilt, I had to rebuild that window, that window um, edge. So I'm going to put a link to that video up here. But I had to do that on both sides because this whole thing was just rotted. And when I did that, you'll notice there are no there are no holes in any of that outside channel that's red and white. 
or channel, you know, the, the flange over there. There's no holes in it because that's all brand new metal. A lot of that is brand new metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put it back with the staples. I'm going to put it back with some 3M plastic emblem adhesive. And I know this works. I became accustomed to this when I was restoring my 71 Cutlass convertible. And on the back trunk, there are like, it says Oldsmobile across the back. So in, in individual little letters, <laughs> spelling Oldsmobile all the way across the rear trunk lid. So the reason why I had to replace my trunk lid is because those Oldsmobile letters had little holes punched in them, two per letter, and it just rotted out the entire bottom of the, of the trunk lid. So I got a used trunk lid that didn't have the little holes punched in it, and I wasn't going to do that. So uh, I used this to attach those emblems, and those emblems have been on there for 10 years and haven't moved. So I know this works, and I've already used it on that. So that window fuzzy already has this on it. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing to notice is this quote unquote prebent, <laughs> prebent window fuzzy uh, doesn't exactly doesn't exactly fit per se uh, when it's bent. You can see it's it's off there and it's here. And on the other on the driver's side when I did it, this point was off by boop, that much. <laughs> it was like this. So I ended up having to un, I had to straighten it out and then put the bend where I, where I needed it. So let's get, we're going to have to go to the other side and have to tinker and play around with that and then make sure that this lines up with the run channel on that side and this lines up with the run channel on the other side. So I've got my piece of stainless on the car it's snapped over and I made sure that up here I made sure that it's tapped back so it's about a 32nd to a 16th inch clear. It's basically flush with where the, the flat edge ends and then the, the the radius starts so making sure that this is back because what you need to do is this point on the fuzzy needs to go right in that little nape and then you need to make sure that this curve aligns with this curve so you want it to you know to to mate up with with the stainless um, and let it and let that dress the window so uh, one of the ways you can cut this is with a pair of snips a pair of, you know wire snips or, or dikes and I'm just going to show you just on the very edge how that works but there you go it'll cut it and you know that you might need to trim up the, the uh, fuzzy part but you know that this will cut it a pair of uh, Weiss tin snips will also cut it you can cut it with a with a um, a grinding wheel, but then that melts the fuzzy. So, you know, this is kind of a little calm little way to, to sneak up on it and get it done. So let's put this in here and just see where we're at. So I'm going to start shoving this back, and I'm probably maybe a quarter inch here. So I need to move this back. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. It's already tucked way up in there, so I'm going to trim this back. I need to cut maybe a half inch off the length. And that'll maybe start allow me to start shoving this back and getting this in position. So now it is that's where I want it. But now I've got to see this how much it's inside of there. So I'm gonna mark that and trim that on that line, and then that's gonna be where we're at. All right, I think I got it. Let's see. Yep. All right, so I trimmed it. And then I smash the end flat. So it is right where I want it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right bumping up against the uh, uh, the, the run channel. And uh, I like that. So now, before I move it, before I let go of it, let me show you. The pre-bend, same thing. Look, it's here, it, the, uh, the, the fuzzy is here but the nape is there. So I need to move that point back about a half inch maybe. So I'm gonna mark that and I'm gonna take that onto my bench and go straighten that out and then bend it back. So I'm gonna to try to straighten it out freehand. And it's gonna leave a little bit of a kink there which is gonna be a problem. I had it on the other one. But you can see how this stuff bends and you just slowly take your time slowly 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 now look I put an s bend in it but 
now at least I've got that out and it looks like it's it's kind of kinked a little bit here I'll be able to pinch that back down and straighten it out but I'm trying to get this to go about back to where it was it would have been just as well if they had not pre-bent it <laughs> but you know okay so I'm gonna pinch that closed and then my mark is here and I'm gonna go ahead and bend that so I brought it over to my vise and I have it pinched in where it's uh, I've got a little notch there so it doesn't it doesn't crush the stainless it's got little little V notches here but I've got it and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that to to hopefully get a get a good pinch uh, um, a tight bend right there that ought to be enough bring that over to the car and get it finished so I got it bent like I like it I got it marked I marked it right here so there's a sharpie mark there and you'll see it over it overhangs on both sides so you got to mark that and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply the emblem adhesive. So this is 3M part number 08061. I'm pretty sure you can get this at AutoZone or any other one of the big box stores. I got it from my body. I'm in my auto paint supply place. I've had this one for a little while. And you're going to apply a bead on here, not, not overly thick. Um, and then you're going to apply a bead on here. Again, not overly thick, but this is going to have some irregularities, so you've got to bridge the irregularities, so it's got to be um, thick enough to do that, but not so thick that it, that it skins without, you know, and then and sealing in and keeping the interior of it wet. So this is clear. It cleans up with, uh, with alcohol or acetone, I believe, one of the two, or both. Oops, so somewhere back here. And just put a little bit all the way down and if you make a mess with it you can easily clean it up I was able to clean up the driver's side let me go ahead and get this bead on here I'll do the bead on the piece of molding and then we're gonna let that um, smear around a bit and then let it dry tack it hold it with some vice grips and after about 30 minutes or so it should be good to go all right while we're waiting for that to to dry how about we turn our attention to the stainless that goes on the bottom of the door it's the same thing with the window fuzzy the difference here though is on this window fuzzy the track for the run channel for the vent window is has got an indent so that'll pretty much index where your fuzzy needs to go and that's where this is so this has got a, a, a turn down on it already so I know I can glue this I can glue that right there and then when I bring this to the car I can trim this after it's attached to this piece of molding I know it's close enough I brought it to the driver's side and it's gonna come close to fitting so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this piece that I did with the piece that goes in the quarter window but before I do that you'll notice that it's got two steel clips on the end that have that 832 screw in it and I have a rusted out screw it's stuck in both sides both sides and the clip set does not come with this so I've got to take these two steel pieces and I'm gonna to have to try to get the screw out and then pass a tap through it and then we'll be on our way so it's been a little while I went inside took a break so now we got to put these on and uh, they're all definitely there they're dried up so this should 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 attach and stick my marker marks a lot mark right there my sharpie mark that's there I'm just gonna walk it down it and I've got a couple of vice grips and I'm going to vice grip it up and let it sit for a little bit but that's all, all you need to do and that'll hold and what I've discovered is that the molding only needs 
a couple of uh, fasteners, maybe at the ends. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, that's where I'm going to have to, like, put a little bit of, give it a little helping hand with the vice grip. But that's it. You can see it's mostly staying on. So once you clamp it and it really hardens, then uh, it'll be locked on. So I'm going to do that to the other one, clamp it, let it sit, and we'll put them on. Before we put this stainless on the rear quarter window, I want to point out that there's one hole up in the front that you get. You can kind of see the daylight through it. There's a way to get back here and then insert a screw right here. And that clip probably looks like the two clips that are on the other molding that I had to repair. However, it is missing. So I just put a mark here where it's supposed to be and I'm going to try to make do with one of these. I'm going to just put this in here some sort of which away and hope that I can find it with that screw and that's going to hold that in on this side. So it screws in the forward part. And then uh, the back side, it just clips over the rear molding, but I'm going to try to put a screw somewhere back here too. So um, I know I did that on the passenger side. I just went through and through the fuzzy. So we're going to try to figure that out too. I ended up having a welding nut on that little clip. So we're going to see if that works. Hopefully it should. It was too, it was too high in, a, um, in, the, in the track. It needed to be much lower. So that's what I did, and now let's see if that attaches. Yeah, if you look back there, you can see it. The hole's looking right at it. So I'll be able to get it. And it's in. There it is. All right, so that's this. All right, now it's fully in. It's seated. I'm going to put one screw back here to hold the uh the fuzzy because it's it just hangs wild so i'm gonna put one screw back here to hold that tight but you can see how it how it uh flushed out over here and it looks good you know it's all the way in so we're gonna go with that okay let's deal with the rear quarter glass so i got all the parts that go to it sitting right here this is everything um, so I have an entire episode that I laid all of this out, door glass, rear quarter glass, regulators, tracks, every which one to show you where everything goes. But let's go over this rear quarter glass. So it's got the rear quarter glass with its bottom track, it's got a, real, a long track in the bottom, and then it's got uh, a C-channel that mounts here. The factory had it tack welded. The aftermarket gives it to you with little screws so that you can put the screws in it. It makes it easier to put everything together because you can, you can um, put this in and attach it to the window rather than trying to fish the regulator around this. Around this. But, uh, so the, the forward roller is a long track that goes in the front and, it's, and it screws to the side of the car. One, two, three screws. And this slips on just like this. So this goes here. Then, at the back, there's a C-channel, and this track goes over this rear wheel, and it goes just like this. So when you look at it in the car, it enters from the top. So that's how you can tell the difference between the passenger side and the driver's side. It does that. And then the regulator, the regulator has a wheel on it, and that regulator wheel goes on to this track. And of course you crank. 4, 8, 32 screws in this on the aftermarket stuff, and that's it. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the car now. Okay, so this is a Tetris puzzle that needs to go in a certain order. And what I find from doing the other side, the quickest order or the best order is first the regulator, then the long track. And the long track goes that way and the reason why you need the regulator first is because the track crosses its back so you can't put the regulator in with the track in uh, then I find once you get those two in then slip the glass in from the back to the front get the wheel in a track you leave this loose so it can rattle around you can get it in it goes into the run channel then the last thing is once you have all that in then you put in the back C 
So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go one, two, three, four with the regulator, four bolts. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I've got this in the right position or not. I might have to roll it out of the way as I go with the glass. But, but um, yeah, it looks like I got it all the way up. It's liable to get in the way. So I'm going to crank it all the way down. And once I get this in, I'll crank it down. Then I'm going to put the track in. And then, um, and then the glass. Alright, regulator's in, forward track is in, top bolt is loose. Now I need to lower this, lower the regulator. Handle. Down, 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 down. Alright. Get the glass. Get the glass in, the glass from the back. First, in that little hole here. This hole, built it, get it to the to the track. I would not be surprised if you might need to unbolt your track in order to do this, but there you go. I was able to get mine without. So now that's all right. Now it's in. So what I need to do now is I need to get that C channel in there, and it's going to take a few minutes because <laughs> you got to be a contortionist to hold this up and do all kinds of crazy stuff so let me just get that done and I'll come back to you when it's done all right the last thing is this track right here so it's easy with the um, with it not it being able to be screwed on with it not being welded if it was welded on you'd have to do something different so now I'm gonna roll the regulator up the windows kind of like stuck in place here and then now they got the window regulator up I can roll this on and attach it to the bottom of the window and there you go okay so now I just need to put four screws in that all right everything's connected but nothing's tight and it looks like it's still sitting in the track which is good because if if the glass is out of position, it's because it's in the wrong spot of that bottom track because those two rollers are set. So the glass needs to be relative to those to the tracks. So you may need to slide it forward or back. I had to take this glass out just a few minutes ago and slide it forward because I wasn't quite centered. And now it's, it's running a lot better. So uh, here we go. And we are all the way up. Yep. Yeah, the glass is up there. It's all the way up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably shove it forward. Let me see. Let me see if I can get it down. Yeah. And then up. Yeah, it definitely needs to go forward. Every time I move it, 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 uh, it kind of... Um, slide so we can get it adjusted forward and then see what that does keep it in this run channel tighten that up first to get the regulator tight you also have to be careful if you if you use screws that are too long it'll bang on the uh, regulator so Make sure you're using screws that are short, and if you got your windows not moving, <laughs> it might be stuck on the bolt. So let's see. Going down. And it's got good action. Going up. Really good action. Now that I'm tightening it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Lock that down. That's good. Lock the whole thing. Tighten the forward part. I'm sorry, the back part here. Oh, my goodness. You know, <laughs> it took me a few attempts to do this. If you knew exactly what you were doing, you might be able to do it in 15 to 20 minutes. But I had so many adjustments to make that it's not funny. 
but it's in. All right, now to the door. All right, the door. Unfortunately, you can't put the run channel in without knowing where to stop it at the vent glass. So, and you can't put the glass in without the run channel or the vent glass, I mean, and the vent glass in place. So I'm gonna have to put the vent glass, fit the run channel, adhere that, take the vent glass out, put the glass in, vent glass back, and then everything can be assembled. So it's kind of like in order to put, just because I'm missing this run channel, that's giving me an extra step. So the vent glass is in, and there's four sheet metal screws, two at the top, two at the bottom. I don't have the regulator in. So there's a number of bolts here that hold that, and then there's also a bolt at the bottom that adjusts this run channel, this run channel that adjusts it in and out. There's also another track that's over here. It's in the door, I had to replace this one. This one was rusted. It goes to a little, so there's a little screw back here. And that's kind of a carriage head sort of a setup, and it's in a track. So this goes, this can slide in and out. Same thing with the, with the track of the, of the um, shoot, you can't even see it, but the same thing with the track of the, of the vent glass, that run, that run channel. So we need to put the run channel in that track all the way up and around and then terminate it here. So down here it can run, it can run long, but in here it needs to be exact. And that's all we need to do. You saw you saw earlier in the video, um, you know how how I did this. So I've got it clamped in the corner because that's the hardest part. You know, get it pulled back in this corner. So pre-bend that. You can bend it over your glass if it's not already pre-bent. And I'm just going to straighten this out until I get it close. I'm going to take my sharpie and I'm going to mark it and I'm going to clip it right here to where this just nestles up against the the, uh, the edge of this run channel. And then the bottom is just going to run long. I will cut the two little tail pieces off so I don't cut myself as I'm reaching into the door. Once I get it cut to shape, then you saw the thing. Uh, the molding adhesive, not the molding, the, the weather stripping adhesive. Coated on the, on the canvas of this. Coated on the inside of the door in both tracks. Let them dry. Come back. Clamp it in place. Put it in. When the glass is in, it'll hold it. So that's what we're doing. All right, it's been drying for about 20 minutes. It's warm, it's warm in here. I'm just gonna stick this in. I'm gonna have to scrap the paint. And start from this back corner. And once it sticks, it's gonna stick. So we need to be careful with the corner. We need to go up and back. And there it is. Hear that. Okay. I'm gonna get in a door and do that, but then we need to do this one all the way up the top. good to tighten just the edge just a little bit that's gonna do it all the way in run channels all the way in and it is stuck so now I just need to get it inside of the door pull the vent glass out and then put the glass in we'll go over all that in a second now we're going back to where we were first thing this morning when we were gluing the fuzzies to the stainless so Remember, I left this long because I had to wait until I got that run channel in. So this now has an 832 on this side, an 832 on this side, and they go in these two holes here. One here and then one on the forward side of the door. So what I need to do is I need to put this at least where it roughly goes and then trim. You can see this. I need to trim that to, to fit. So I'm going to clip that and then uh, screw this in. All right, just like I showed you the rear quarter window, how that all assembles, here's how the front uh, the, or the door the door assembles. So you've got a, a channel on the bottom of your window and a track. And then the regulator 
has two wheels that face that way, they go in this track. And then, and then you have on the door, mounted on the back side of the door, you have what they call an idler track. And this slips over this one. So this is the one, this is what the glass actually pries up and down against. And that's it. So the regulator has one, two, three, four screws. This has two screws. And uh, this, if you have an aftermarket track to go in the bottom of the glass, it'll have four 832 screws and you can put the glass in and then mount the track last and it makes it a lot easier otherwise you got to fish everything around and get the get the wheels on on the glass as it's in the door and it's kind of cramped so let's go ahead and start putting this in regulator slips slips in from the back side back way over here slides in slides in the back Noisily, <laughs> and of course goes when you crank this. Four screws: one, two, three, four. If I can spot one, I'll be able to spot them all. There's one. It gets tricky once you start putting the quarter glass in, but until then, it's easy. Now that's one, two, three, four. Slip the window in, and I'm going to clamp it in place. be able to pick it up in order to put that track on so what we're gonna do is we need to pick it up and aim for these two holes and that's where I can get that, that bar over the regulator and screwed on all right so I got the window regulator up so I can get to it right here and you can see here's the screw, screw holes and there's the two slots. So I need to get this over the window regulator, get it past the window, get the window up, and put this in the track of the window and screw this in. You're kind of flying blind out right back here, but not too bad. track need to get this here just reach up in here and on that last roller just slides over it make sure it's good and free two screws oops two screws one here and one in the front slide in and it's got room it's got room to get by it needs to it needs to go past the glass to get in there we go tilt it back a little bit. 
screwed that and then tilt it in position and there you go make sure the track is on the glass number eight sheet metal screw one two three four and then the regulator and that's a trick so let me grab the regulator and we can put that on at the same time so the regulator is going to nestle up to the bottom there's two screws that go in from the top and that holds it to the vent glass frame and then there's a uh, a bolt that goes in and holds the uh, the pivot handle the, ac the the axle maybe for the for the vent vent window and there's a little retainer clip in here and it's it's difficult to get all this so you kind of have to fish this in and then get that bolt in and then get these two in as it's all kind of loose and then finally you can get the two screws that go into the door and hold everything and lock it all in place um, and again like I said there's four there's four screws there's four sheet metal screws there's two at the top number eights two at the top number eights let's go ahead and get this regulator in we are on the home stretch now I know this has been a marathon video and it's been a marathon day and a half for me to do this or two days actually two days there we go that's better get that in all right Let the wedge it take a little bit to wedge it but I'm gonna get it I think that's it get the bolt in oh, I'm having a socket with me all right, got my 7 sixteenths. Tighten this. I got the two screws that mount the regulator to the window frame. They're in right here. I'm going to tighten those down now. And then when we put the next two in, that's going to kind of lock the window frame in position so we really need to get it shift you can see it's kind of cockeyed right now so we get this in I get this on the glass uh, it's on the glass down below and now we get that in get these screws get those two screws and it'll be in except for one last bolt been at this far too long Next thing I'm going to do is going to be the windshield. I'm going to tackle that first thing in the morning. So get this one in. Kind of get it loose because I still need to get the four screws at the top. Those are sheet metal screws. I've said it about 20 times. All right, it's that, it's that. Let's get these four screws. <clears throat> And even though they're supposed to be number eights, I have number eights in three corners. That one of mine was stripped. Come on. I can't see. I am not in position. Let's see. Try the bottom one. Oh, that went right in. <laughs> This is the one that was stripped, so it's a number 10 for me. Okay, let's see. Let me get this one out and see what's going on with it. Got it now. Let it loosen a little bit and find Find a hole. That's it. Last one. Last one, and then we can. All right. So now, 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 now. Yep, the glass is in the run channel, and I got one more thing to put in. Way down at the bottom. Way down at the bottom. 
right here. That is going to be an adjustment screw. So this goes in, this part threads into the to the part the, the, the track, and then this this is right behind this hole, and then when you it's got a slot, it's supposed to have a slot in front of it, and you you, you turn this to adjust to adjust this the levelness of the of the glass track so that's the last thing to put in all right i don't want to go too far got the glass up a little glass down rolls down nice and easy let's see roll it down down Need to adjust this level in this, but other than that, I'm gonna get this tight. Let's check out the. Uh, let's see if the, the vent glass will roll will open. It should. I didn't do anything, of course. There you go. Yep. Ta-da! All right. Woo. What you think? Let's take a step back and look at everything. Ooh, there it is. I just cleaned it up with a little bit of Windex. Adjusted my door a little bit. And um, <laughs> look at that. Hello. <laughs> Dork. Oh, man, that is so fine. Holy cow. Look at that. Look at that. Do you remember what we started with? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> New sheet metal, new sheet metal, new bottom of the door, new floor pan. <laughs> Go over everything again. Wow, that looks good. But there you have it. That's going to do it. <laughs> it's been a long two days, a very long two days. I'm tired. This is Labor Day weekend. I got four days to work, so I'm, I'm just a couple of hours behind schedule for what I wanted to do this weekend, but I think I can still make it. I think I can still do everything I want to do, but that's going to do it. I sure hope you got something out of it. I know it's probably a marathon video. I don't know what it's going to be like when I, until I edit it, but if you enjoyed the video, if you got something out of it, please give it a thumbs up, and as always, if you're enjoying the channel, I'd love a subscription. Until I see you next time, please take care of yourself. Cheers.